Well, good evening, everyone. I'm Jason O'Dell, and tonight I'm going to be sharing some of my photos and information about uh, a trip that I took back in 2019 to um, the Caribbean coast of Panama, which is kind of an interesting place, and I had never even occurred to me about it. So I'm going to share some of that and talk about um, what I saw, what I did, and how I'm going to be going back there in a few months, uh, hopefully um, to have some more good photography opportunities. So I want to start off just with an introduction. I'm going to give some background on Panama, uh, a little geology, talk a little bit about the Panama Canal, talk a little bit about the wildlife that you can find there. And then I'll talk about and share images from my uh, trip that I took there back in May of 2019. Um, I'll talk about a particular location, and that's Isla Bastimentos um, and the Tranquilo Bay Eco and Adventure Lodge, which is where I happen to stay. And then at the end, I'll give you some details on an upcoming trip to go back to this location this uh, later this fall. So I want to start off by talking about the uh, geology of Panama. It's an interesting place. Um, you might think about where is Panama? Well, it's Central America. It's that piece that connects, um, it connects uh, North and South America. Uh, so to the west of Panama is Costa Rica and to the east and south is Colombia. On the, so it's right there in the middle. Now, the cool thing about Panama, the interesting thing and something I didn't really know until I went there was that Panama, the, the actual isthmus itself, that connection did not form until about 3 million years ago. Up until that point, um, there was it was actually an open ocean between the Pacific and the Atlantic. And this next slide shows what that looks like. When this, when this um, uh, isthmus formed, it was by a combination of forces. So you had plate tectonics happening underneath the ocean here pushing up the plates, creating volcanic activity. So then you had volcanoes popping up, creating volcanic islands. And then the currents that were moving through created a lot of sediment to build up over time. And eventually it filled in. And so now what you have today is this continuous isthmus of Panama. And there's volcanic mountain ranges along it. And if you look really closely right here, Panama City is right down here. And this is where the Panama Canal goes through. So it's a real interesting formation because it's relatively recent. Scientists are still trying to figure out exactly when things formed. Um, they look at the the wildlife. It had tremendous impacts on more on on just the biology and geology of the Earth as a whole. It was pretty cool, actually, what happened. So when the Isthmus of Panama formed, it created what we call a land bridge. And so you have this connection now between North and South America. Now this is several million years ago. And so you have these ancestral wildlife uh, types of you know, mammals and other things, birds, that would normally have been separated between North and South America or Central America. They're now able to migrate back and forth. So there's a lot of ancestral forms of things like bears and elephants and um, things from the horse family, camels that moved down into South America. And there are things from the anteater family and the possums and marsupials and sloths that moved upward into um, North America. Okay, the other thing, oops, sorry about that. The other thing that happened when this land bridge formed is that it disrupted the currents. This slide that I showed you a moment ago here with these currents going back and forth, these currents got disrupted. And so what happened is that it changed the entire pattern of the ocean current flow in the Atlantic and the Pacific. And when that happened, it created uh, the Gulf Stream. And so that's primarily, if you know anything about that, it's responsible for why places like Iceland and the UK and England are a lot warmer than one would, ex one would expect based on their latitude alone. Anyway, we had this huge, uh, what they call the... Um, Great American Biotic Interchange, which is the, what, the scientific term for this. And so there's a tremendous amount of biodiversity. And guess what? The bottleneck for this was all right here, all through this bridge in Panama. So this is a hot spot for biodiversity. And it's why we have so many different, uh, that, that whole 
chunk of you know, everything from Costa Rica down to Colombia that's so diverse biologically. So specifically to Panama, the Panama's biodiversity, there's at least 220 species of mammals, 164 species of amphibians, 226 species of reptiles, 978 bird species, and there's at least 125 or so species that are endemic only found in Panama, um, so that they're unique to Panama. So it's an interesting place to go if you're looking to see um, lots of diversity and lots of different kinds of animals, especially things like sloths and birds and hummingbirds and that kind of stuff. Now, Panama City, which is where you generally fly into if you visit Panama, it's pretty interesting. It's, um, it's a modern city. It's very modern, lots of high rises. Um, obviously, the uh, tourism dollar from the U.S. drives a lot of their economy, as well does as the Panama Canal, as you might imagine. So um, it's an interesting place. There's the modern city, and then there's the historic older town areas. This is a photo that I took down there in, in the part of the what's considered the old old town. It's a little area and it's got lots of um, older architecture, Spanish architecture, and shops. The original Panama City really doesn't exist anymore. The original settlement. Um, is is not there anymore it, it was uh, kind of washed away so it's not it's not built uh, there's nothing there anymore um, another little tidbit about panama is that they they peg their currency the panamanian dollar to the u.s dollar so whatever a dollar is worth you, you can you can go down there and if they take panamanian currency they take u.s dollars they don't care um, they are interchangeable which is a nice thing if you're traveling internationally Another nice thing about Panama City is that it's in the U.S. Um, I think it's in, uh, I think it lives in the central or even the mountain time zone. It's it's really not more than an hour or two different time zone wise from anyone traveling from North America. So it's not like when you travel to Europe and you have a massive time zone uh, jet lag issue. Now, I wouldn't be talking about Panama without at least mentioning the Panama Canal. So here's a diagram. You can find this on Wikipedia, but how does it work? Um, it, it's one of those things that if you do spend any time and you visit Panama City, it's it's worth a few hours to check out or even a half day and you can take a, a boat tour on here. Um, they started, actually France started building the Panama Canal back in 1881. They couldn't figure out how they wanted to do it. And then the US took it over this is massive engineering feat. Um, it's considered one of the seven wonders of the modern world by the um, American uh, Civil Engineering uh, Corps. The way it works is kind of interesting. Um, you've heard, you've probably heard of the locks. I and mean, you know, locks are are these little gates that allow uh, um, vessels to transport either between higher or lower sea level areas, and what it turns out, and I didn't know this, is that the the Atlantic and the Pacific aren't at vastly different. Um, you know, they're both more or less at sea level. Um, but the way they constructed the canal is that this lake right here, this Gatun Lake, is man-made. They built a dam from a river, so there's this river that comes through, and they dammed this off to form a lake, and they cut through here to make it deeper and wider in places. So these little islands are actually mountaintops at one point. Um, there was mahogany trees and things growing in the bottom of this. And so the locks are to raise boats, ships, to the level of this lake, which is above sea level. It's, it's 85 feet, 26 meters above sea level right here. Um, this lake provides a reservoir for, for feeding the locks and, and keeping them in operation. So when you're in Panama City, you're on the Pacific side, and you can there's a the Miraflores locks are right nearby, and in fact it's close to where um, I actually stayed. And you can go over there and you can check them out. And the these these locks are um, you go to this side and and uh, they have some newer larger ones. But if you get there and, and you get there in the morning, you can sometimes see a ship come through and and uh, go through the uh, canal and you can watch it raise up through the locks. It's pretty neat and it's it's something to do. Um, so I was at a I was at a uh, birding conference, sort of a bird expo in Florida back in early 2019, in the before times now. And 
I was there for several days. I was presenting as a vendor there. I had a little booth set up with a colleague of mine. And the guy across from us ran an eco lodge in Panama. I'm like, I never, you know, I never thought about Panama. And, uh, you know, what is, uh, what's special about it? So he told me about this place. And so I agreed to come out and do a site visit and, and go out and check it out. So I flew to Panama uh, from here in Colorado in the, the spring of 2019, in May, um, and spent almost a week there uh, doing photography, checking out the facilities and seeing what it was like to, to, you know, to experience. So this first photo is actually just from my phone. It's, uh, I took a little walk from my hotel. That's a causeway over the Panama Canal itself. So this is entering to the Pacific side. Ships will have already gone through one series of locks, I believe, to get to get to this point. And because I got in early, I went to the Panama Canal just to check it out. Um, and I was very lucky there was a ship coming through wh while I was there. So everyone ran up to this observation tower. And here's the locks. There's two sets of them. There's one on each side. And then there's more locks back here in the background. That are, those are the bigger ones. You can see this giant container ship going through here. And so what happens is the ship comes in and when they're going in this direction, they, they need to be raised up. So the first thing they do is they they lower, they they close the lock that it's going to enter and they drain it so it becomes level. And this we have a little time lapse video of that I took, pardon the hand holding of a time lapse. And then these little these little um uh cable cars, these they uh they pull it. There are electric trains and they pull the, the ship into the lock and then they close the um, the gates behind it. And after the gates close, then they fill it up. So the, the gate will close here. It's pretty cool. This whole thing takes about, you know, half an hour, 20 minutes uh, to happen. They close the gate and then they start filling the lock up with water that gets pumped in. And these, this system is... Uh, yeah, that would be my finger. Uh, this system has been in place this way using reservoirs and, and valves that were the original construction since it opened in 1914. So it still functions this way. And that's just to me, that's amazing. And then once the ships hit the, uh, the, the level of the next, the next uh, gate, they go into the next section of the canal. So I did not go to Panama to see the canal, but I managed to do so. So it was a cool little side trip that I took. Um, and something that's certainly easy enough to do. Um, but where I was going was a place called uh, Bocas del Toro on an island called Bastimente. Now, Bocas del Toro is on the north um, west coast of Panama. So it's close to Costa Rica and it's on the Caribbean side. So if you're thinking about Panama, the little strip of land, think top left corner. Um, how does one get there? Well, the first thing I did was I got on a local flight, the um, turboprop from the smaller airport in Panama, not the international airport. And they fly you out to the airstrip at Bocas del Toro. It takes about an hour, no big deal. You get on there, it's on Air Panama. And then our host or, uh, the, uh, at the Eco Lodge met me at the dock. Uh, they got a car and uh, took me out on a boat. And we headed out for about oh, 20, 30 minutes by boat to the actual Eco Lodge itself. So where is this? This is a fun boat ride and they have space for everybody and you just kind of have an enjoyable time doing it. So here is the island itself. Uh, you fly into the airstrip here. And then what we do is we go by boat down through here all the way around to the Eco Lodge itself. It's called Tranquilo Bay Eco Adventure Lodge. And they've been running this now for many years. It's a uh, low impact um, and they're very interested in conservation and, and they pretty the, the owners are from Texas and they built it themselves. And so everyone there speaks English. It's, it's a really neat place. Um, it's adjacent, if I show you, most of this island is a national park. So there's a tremendous amount of, of just un, untouched rainforest land on this island. Um, because they're near this marine park, you can view and just go wildlife watching. You can do photography. You can go snorkeling right up. They have a dock there. 
Um, they'll take you out on, on excursions. These are some of the things that people can sign up to do um, th through, the, um, through the Eco Lodge itself. Um, if, so if you want to do that, but um, they've got a, a, a birding tower that you can go up to with guides who, who will tell you, you know, what the birds are. Um, and this is what's really cool about this is that it's a complete, I was very surprised. It's a completely modern facility. They built this with, um, you know, American um, and European tourists in mind. Everything is fully air conditioned. Uh, each cabana where you stay has its own UV purified water filtration system. So you don't have to ever worry about whether the water is safe to drink. Um, and the, the nice thing about it is you get up in the morning um, early and this is what you hear. And hopefully you guys can hear that. I don't know, it's a beta feature. But you hear all the birds chirping and this is what it was like outside my cabana one morning at the at the eco lodge they're all spaced apart so it's not like you really have neighbors to worry about it's a really and you can just walk right out into the rainforest if you want and start checking out wildlife so very cool and and very uh tranquil as the name might imply okay some more photos from the actual uh, place where I stayed. This is the from the dock, one early sunrise at the dock before we went out on the boat. Um, this is the observation tower. I think it's something like 80 something feet high. I can't remember the exact height of it, but you can go up there with guides in the morning and the afternoon. You can watch the birds come through. You can see birds at the canopy level, which is really, really cool. And then when you stay there, it's all inclusive. So they cook for you every night. There's there's three meals a day. It's wonderful. Dessert, beer, cold beer. It's always good. You know, if you're going to go somewhere, you, you got to enjoy it, right? So very enjoyable place to go. Now, I was there, obviously, to do photography. So I want to show you some of my photos that I got when I was there in 2019, starting with just stuff that you can find either from the deck of the main lodge building or just wandering around the grounds. Um, and and walking around with your camera doing uh, handheld photography or monopod photography. So there's, um, I believe this is a juvenile or female uh, shiny honey creeper. Uh, this is a silver beak tanager. This one was in Panama City, but I saw it on, on one of my walks around there. This little guy is a golden colored mannequin. And mannequins are really interesting bird species because the males click their wings and do these elaborate dances on a little patch of area like a particular that they clear and it's called a lek. And it's a little display area where they attract females. Um, and so in, in, in this particular species, the male needs to have an apprentice, usually a juvenile male who's learning the dance moves, if you might, learning the routine, if you will. And the pair of them will dance together to attract a female, hopefully to mate with the male. And there are several of these leks on the grounds there and you just go there and you uh, kind of stake it out and uh, you wait for the birds to come come in and, and sure enough, they, they appear. And if you get lucky, you get some photos of it. Here's the adult shiny honey creeper. Um, looks a lot like the purple honey creeper, purple honey creepers I photographed when I went to Trinidad for a workshop. Um, looks almost the same, but it's a it's a different species that you find in Panama. There's lots of hummingbirds on the property as well. So here's a a, a striped throated hermit. This thing is tiny. It's probably all of three inches long. I photographed this handheld with my um, 500 millimeter um, Nikon lens. And you can get them going into the flowers. And they're a really hard subject, but when you get a good shot, it's it's absolutely worth it. So they'll they'll come and you you start to learn where they like to hang out and you can you can stake them out and, and photograph them. And these were all done just in the yard, just right, you know, a few hundred feet from where I was staying in my cabana. It was really easy to do this. You can also go and take your view from the the 80 odd foot observation tower. And it ends up being a little over hundred feet above sea level. And this is the view that you get. This is a panoramic shot from my phone. 
and you can look out and see the uh, the uh, the water. It's pretty nice. But you can see you're at canopy level for a lot of these trees. Here's one of the cabanas down here, and every morning and every evening at sunrise and sunset, birds will fly through, and this is where you will find the parrots. So you can get flight shots like this of the of the parrots coming through. And these are Amazon parrots. Um, one morning I was there and I was actually really lucky. I got exactly one photograph and it was in focus. This was a green ibis. Uh, I had heard of glossy ibis and I've heard of white ibis and, um, and certain other ones, but never had I heard of a green ibis. It's more of a, a forest, a rainforest dwelling uh, critter. And what's interesting is it gets its name from this little green patch on its neck. And it's not green feathers, they're just iridescent. And the crazy part about this is that um, they only show green like that in certain light, like it has to hit it just right. And so when I took this photograph, my guide was absolutely floored. He said for 10 years that he's been working there and, and in that area, He's never gotten a photograph of the green ibis actually showing its green color because the light never hit it right. And this was my one photo that I happened to have just enough time to get a click off before it, it got too far away. Um, so just really cool thing to see, the birds that I hadn't expected to see and you know some I hadn't even heard of. So it's a real fun place to, to get stuff like that. Sometimes you just get lucky. Um, of course, not everything in Panama is birds. There's also reptiles and amphibians. So lots of um, anoles, different kinds of lizards on the trees. And I was walking around and I think I was using my, um, I was just using a, a 105 macro lens and I had a flash so I could pop a little light on these guys. Um, this is a juvenile basilisk lizard. And yes, this is the one that you may have seen on the nature shows where it runs across the pond of water, <laughs> runs across a pond on top of the surface of the, of the water because they get going uh, that fast. This is one of those. And I saw this one at a, a little park near my hotel in Panama City. So that was kind of cool. Um, also on um, on uh, Isla Bastimentos, there is a poison arrow frog species. It's called the strawberry dart frog, poison dart frog. So these are the kinds, you know, that you don't want to lick because you won't survive. And they're they're teeny little things. And you can go into the, the rainforest. And fortunately, um, there's guides there who will take you in. They know exactly where to go, where you're likely to find these guys. Um, it's with all things, there's always some hit or miss to it, but we went looking for frogs. We found frogs, um, even found a snake. Um, and just so you know, I shot this with a 300 millimeter lens. So no, I was not that close to this snake. <laughs> so, um, there's lots of different reptiles and there's all kinds of things. Of course, there's insects and and um, possums and all kinds of night critters. And one of the things they like to do is sometimes go on a night hike uh, with your headlamp and you can sometimes find, uh, you know, raccoons and other kinds of, of, um, of uh, mammals at night. Now, the favorite photogenic critter that I really like to see besides the birds are the sloths. And in Panama, and in this island in particular, there are two species of sloths. They have the three-toed and the four-toed sloth. The three-toed is the more common sloth. And I don't know if any of you have ever, you know, been to Costa Rica or talked to someone who's been to Costa Rica, because that's usually where people hear about sloths. And almost all the pictures that you see of them, there's a sloth way up in a tree, and it's hunkered down under the leaves. And it's just this little blob that someone points to and say, see, that's a sloth. And they don't do anything. Well, in Panama, uh, especially this particular section of Panama, the sloths do not have their main predator, which in Costa Rica is the harpy eagle. These big old harpy eagles come and eat sloths. They don't have the eagles on this island. So the sloths really don't have any major large predators, at least not year round. And so most of the time we will find them out and about. And so sure enough, these were all captured within a few hundred feet of where I was staying, just on the property, three-toed sloth. The one on the left is a male, I believe, and it came down the tree and we just watched it do its thing. Um, and then there was a mama sloth with her, with her baby. 
and she was up in this one tree and actually came down the tree and I have photos of that sloth that I took with my phone. That's how close that that I was able to get to it. Obviously, I didn't want to disturb it with her her baby, but um, they're really cool. Um, and it's a unique thing to be able to see sloths actually active in the wild rather than just hunkered down. So it's a, a special treat and it's almost guaranteed that we will see sloths when we go to Panama at this particular location. There were other places where we went by boat where we also saw sloths, but these were all, all these photographs were taken on the property within a few hundred yards of the main lodge. I took a side trip to a place called the Snyder Canal. And the canal is actually more on the mainland. It's not on the island itself. And this was a canal that was dug out in the 1800s to transport, amongst other things, bananas. It was a way they could get stuff to, from, from the plantation to the ocean by canal. So they, so they dug this by hand in the late 1800s, crazy. And one of the things we'll do when we go out there is, is they will take us by boat. It's about an hour out there on a boat ride on that same boat that I showed you before to this canal. And the reason why it's interesting is you can do a lot of wildlife viewing and photography because you're going down the canal and there's rainforest cut on either side of you. And this is what it looks like. So we're in the boat and I shot this. And so you can just see that anytime we, uh, you know, there's, there's just rainforest on either side of you. And so when you find birds, you're able to photograph them from the boat itself. So again, I did a lot of handheld photography with my um, image stabilized lens. Um, and I saw a variety of species. So there's woodpecker. I shot this from the boat feeding, feeding its offspring. This is a uh, Hakana. And then there's several species of kingfisher. This is, I think, the belted kingfisher. And then this is the American pygmy kingfisher. It's the smallest kingfisher species. This was in the dark. I think I was up, at, it was very dark back there. Um, and I think I was at like ISO 8000 or something to get this photograph. Another bird that some of you may have seen if you're familiar with going to the Everglades is the purple gallinule. And this is, again, I photographed this from, from the boat. And then on the way back, there's other places to go where there's other kinds of birds because there's shorebirds and migratory birds so um, and nesting colonies. So this is a red-billed tropic bird. And the, the more mature adults have these really long tail plumes. This one didn't happen to have that. Here is a brown booby. Uh, you may have been familiar with the blue-footed variety of this from the Galapagos. This is the brown booby species. Looks very similar, but has decidedly not blue feet. They're quite yellow. Um, so these are all photographs that I got in the span of about five days visiting, uh, visiting the Tranquilo Bay property. And so, you know, when people ask me, why would you go to Panama? Well, the way I look at it is this. Um, first of all, you get almost the same amount of biodiversity as you get in Costa Rica, a lot of the same species like the sloths but without the tourists, and in the case of the sloths, without the predators. So it's a little bit more laid back environment. It's not so hectic. Plus it's pretty easy to get to. You can fly directly into Panama City. And yes, we do take the, you know, I took that little hour turboprop over to the island. Um, it makes it kind of remote, but it, it, that's one of the elements of the charm, I think. As I mentioned before, Panama accepts the US dollar. And where I'm staying is at an all-inclusive um, property, so that makes it real easy. You don't have to worry about your meals once you get there. And there's lots of uh, flights into Panama City. They've been resuming flights now, um, both American Airlines, United Airlines, and then the Panamanian airline Copa, which is a good airline. I flew them down there. Um, they all get to Panama City. Uh, you can get there through Houston. You can get there through... Um, I'm actually, fly yeah, I'm flying through Houston when I go back. You can get there through Miami, uh, LA, a few other places. It just depends on, on where you're at, but, but it's very doable. So now the question that everybody probably has on their mind, which is, is it safe to go to Panama with all this stuff about COVID going on? Um, and the answer is absolutely. If you are 
especially and and really if you're vaccinated it is absolutely safe to go to um to panama first of all they're open for international tourism as long as you're going as a tourist uh they would love to have your your uh, currency they would love to have your dollars the only exceptions right now are if you're coming from places like the uk where some of these variants have been then there's some quarantine restrictions but for right now at least as of june 10th the only requirement to get into panama is presenting them a negative covid test which you can do easily enough within 48 hours of your arrival so you just get a test at your local walgreens or whatever and and um and, if, and again if you're vaccinated the likelihood of you being um, covid positive is probably zero or nil um now you don't need a test to exit panama but you do need a test to get back into the us until at least until they change their rules um, i'm waiting to see if they change that for vaccinated travelers but right now the us is um is um requiring a covid test that is three days prior to your return i'm hoping that this changes for vaccinated travelers but who knows in the meantime uh, worst case situation is you can get a test, a rapid test at the airport for departing passengers that cost 50 bucks and they get your result in 40 minutes. So you go to the airport a little early, you get your test and you can travel back to enter the U.S. without any without any issues. Again, these rules sort of change as 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 the situation uh, changes. You know, I'm I'm hoping my my fingers are crossed that that rules for vaccinated travelers will start to um, be lessened somewhat. Um, obviously, you still have to wear a mask and stuff on the plane. That's just the nature of air travel right now. So I am going back to Panama uh, this September. I was originally planning on going there last April and then, you know, stuff happened. Um, so I will be going to Panama with clients September 19th through 25th. Um, so we're gonna fly into Panama City stay overnight near the Panama Canal uh, because that's closer to the secondary airport that we'll be flying out of. The following morning, we fly to Bocas del Toro to pick us up and we'll go over to the Tranquilo Bay Eco Lodge and we will then have uh, four, uh, four days, uh, four nights shooting nature photography at the premises as well as that boat tour one of the days we'll have an all day trip to do boat boat photography along that um, canal then we'll fly back to panama city on september 24th that's a friday we will transfer to an airport hotel near the international airport so that we can fly home on the 25th now i do have some clients who are extending their stay um, to do some some additional tourism i'm helping them set that up with my travel agent um, but for the most part, that is the photo safari itinerary. What am I gonna bring? Well, I'll be bringing my Nikon mirrorless camera. I'm currently shooting a Z7 II. Um, and you wanna, you definitely want a telephoto lens. And the best ones for this kind of a trip are the more compact. You, you really don't wanna have to lug around uh, a 500 or 600 millimeter F4 lens. As nice as those are, um, they are just incredibly awkward to use because this is a lot of handheld uh, shooting. So I recommend a monopod and a shoulder and or a shoulder stock for handheld shooting. But if you've got one of those telephoto zooms, like a 100 to 400, 200 to 500, or those, um, was a Sigma and Tamron, they make those 160 to or 120 to 600, something in those in those uh, range that you can handheld. Those are perfect for where where we're going to be. They work. Uh, they'll work on the um, for the sloths, the larger stuff, as well as the birds. And when you're on the boat, they're easy enough to handheld, especially the ones that have image stabilization in them. Now, I will usually bring some form of close-up lens. It doesn't have to be a macro lens, but there are things like insects and butterflies and beetles and you know the the lizards and whatever uh, mushrooms that you can photograph. Um, and sometimes a little flash can be useful. And like I said, I'll be bringing a monopod when I go. I have a monopod and I have an Arca Swiss shoulder stock that I mount to the monopod with a tilt head. And it makes for a nice mobile but sturdy rig. And it works for everything except when you're on the boat. You know, you don't want that. Um, what's included? Um, 
pretty much everything that I described in the itinerary. So you get your hotel in Panama City on the front end. All of our inner hotel uh, and airport transfers are included. It includes the airfare to go to Bocas del Toro uh, from Panama City. The four nights, all-inclusive accommodations at the Eco Lodge includes meals as well as beer and wine. You know, there's nothing better than doing photography and then having a cold beer when you get back from a humid uh, place. Um, we'll go on the boating excursion to the Snyder Canal. And then on the on the backside, we have the one night stay in the Panama City. Anything beyond that is able to be arranged, but that would be at extra expense. So I do have a limited number of spaces to, to join me um, on this trip. Um, but it is extremely tight right now. I've got I've got space for a couple of photographers probably. So if you're interested, um, you can get in touch with me directly. There's my website, and then the Eventzilla site has the listing of all of of these, and you can register for a um, a spot on this trip. And what I have right now for sure is I have one cabana remaining, which I can either take a single photographer or two photographers sharing a room or one photographer and they could bring a non-photographer companion if you just wanna bring you know, a, bring your companion. The companion um, discount would, would mean they wouldn't be going on the boat trip with us, but they could do all the other stuff at the Eco Lodge. So that's the thing I hope, I mean, it's, it's totally fun. I'm really looking forward to going back there. It just sucked that we couldn't do it last year. I've, I've been chomping to, to get back there to do some really great wildlife photography, see the tremendous biodiversity and just enjoy a, a really quiet, um, relatively unspoiled part of um, Central America. It's just, it's a real unique spot.